In the near future, sea levels rise due to rapid climate change and mankind decides to relocate to space. The technology has advanced significantly, allowing people to construct shelters between the orbital planes of Earth and the Moon. Humans were able to construct approximately 80 shelters, of which shelters 8, 12, and 13 have joined forces to start a rebellion. The Adrian Republic was formed by these colonies, and they began inflicting havoc on Earth and other habitats. For many decades, the Allied forces and the Adrian Republic have been at war. Meanwhile, the humans who remain on Earth manufacture weaponry, including lethal combat AIs, and deliver it to the Allied forces. We are then introduced to Captain Yun Jung Yi, who's currently waking up in an abandoned place after an explosion. Autonomous robots are pursuing her, and she swiftly defends herself with accurate shots and innovative use of her weapon's hook. However, during the battle, she's shot in the fingers, revealing that she's actually made of wires. And just then, Captain Yun is deactivated, and the entire scenario is shown to be a virtual battle simulation, who's been in a coma for the last 35 years. Yun was believed to be the only person who could end the civil war if she executed her last task, which she supposedly failed. And currently, a tech company named Chronoid is using a duplicate of her brain to try to make the perfect soldier robot that could be multiplied and deployed to combat. The project is titled Jung Yi, and the team is led by Captain Yun's daughter, Seo Hyun, who has to watch her mother die over and over again. Later, the director of Chronoid Tech, Kim Sang Hoon, gives a presentation to the upper management about the state of the simulations. He explains that Yoon's final mission served as the source from which all of the AI's data was copied. The scientists used several simulations to try to extract combat memory data from her brain. But Yoon failed her final task. Therefore, even in the simulations, she dies every time. Upon hearing this, the upper management is visibly disappointed with the Zheng Yi project. Following the presentation, Director Kim and Seo Hun have a private meeting. Kim assures Seo Hun that she has his full support and that the chairman has high expectations from her. He began working for the chairman 10 years ago, but he's aware that Seo Hun was taken in when she was a small child who had lost her mother. Later, after running some tests on an android, a new staff member starts a conversation with Seo Hyun. He uses the opportunity to express how thrilled he is to be working here because he's always admired Captain Yun. But Seo Hyun explains that her mother never aspired to be a hero. She only became a mercenary to pay for Seo Hyun's treatments after she was diagnosed with cancer as a child. She cried every time her mother went off to war, and the day of her surgery also happened to be her mother's death. Seo Hyun leaves for the day, taking the local train, where she observes a mother bonding with her child. Then she recalls the last time she saw her mother. Right before Seo Hyun's procedure, the two hugged and rubbed each other's cheeks. When the train arrives at its destination, Seo Hyun goes to take her annual ethics test, which everyone is required to take to verify they aren't a robot. She then visits her doctor for a routine physical examination. Tragically, the X-ray scans reveal that her childhood cancer has returned, and she now has only three months to live. The doctor explains that the best thing to do would be to immediately clone her brain and transfer it to a prosthetic body, as laws now protect people who do this. But they only protect people who do this with type A, which is quite expensive. There's also type B, which is less expensive, but loses rights such as marriage, freedom of movement, and adoption. The final option is type C, which the government will offer free of charge. Some corporations, however, will be permitted to utilize her brain data and create clones from it. Seo Hyun says she'll think about it and walks away, while we see that the doctor is also a robot. She then goes to see her mother, who's merely a brain and torso. The scene then shifts to a flashback of Seo Hyun's childhood. She recalls discovering that her mother survived the flight, but is currently in a critical situation. The Chronoid team plays a visit to Seo Hyun and her grandma, requesting that her grandmother sign the contract. They would pay for Seo Hyun's education and medical treatment in exchange for her grandmother allowing Yun's brain to develop into a Type C. A few days later, the AI model number 18 has been activated and is ready for simulation at Chronoid. But first, Kim instructs the team to shoot the android in the leg before they begin to achieve a different result. When Yun awakes in the simulation, she's in immense pain from the leg wound, and it hurts Seo Hyun to see her mother suffering. Yun tries to battle through the pain, but she's easily outmatched and her will to fight begins to fade. But just as they're about to end the test, a new section of the artificial brain, represented by yellow strobes of light, is triggered, and the robot fights back with full strength. 
Director Kim is ecstatic with this development and can't wait to show it off to the bosses. The following day, the team travels to Chronoid's main headquarters to inform the company's chairman of this progress. But instead, they're informed that the chairman is busy and are greeted by the new product development director, who keeps giggling at Kim. Kim is surprised by the necessity for a product development department because the company has never had one before, since it only manufactures weapons. He worries that weapons development will be scaled back, but his worries are not addressed and the group is sent away without answers. On the way back, Kim insults the new employee and promises he'll keep the chairman's dream alive. A few days later, the team is considering new elements for their upcoming robot test. A staff member then informs Kim and Seo Hyun that the chairman is in his office. On the way, Kim inquires if Seo Hyun has been taking her ethics test, as it's critical for them to ensure she's psychologically stable while working with her mother as an experiment. As they walk in, Kim is instantly deactivated, and it's surprisingly revealed that he's the first prototype created by the chairman himself. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun tells the chairman about their wonderful breakthrough, but he's underwhelmed. Instead, he declares that a peace treaty has been signed between the Adriatic Republic and the Allied forces, and that the civil war is now over. Because the battle AIs will no longer be required, he instructs Seo Hyun to cease the Zheng Yi project. The chairman has already planned that they will start creating household services with AI. He further reveals that after everything's over, he will destroy Kim. After a few hours, the team returns to work since the project must be completed properly before they change goals. Yun continues to die in the same position, and Kim becomes enraged since they can't trigger the new brain area again to exclude it. Therefore, he feels it's time for some extreme ideas. He demands that an arm be chopped to activate the yellow section of the brain, but he's unsuccessful in doing so. In desperation, Kim enters the laboratory and sets the AI on fire, causing her to cry in pain. All of this is too much for Seo Hyun to endure, so she snaps and shuts down the system to end her mother's misery. Since she refuses to switch it back on, an angry Kim points a gun at her head. This leads to a furious argument between them, but they're interrupted by a staff member who informs Kim that the chairman is waiting for him. Kim walks away without saying anything, and Seo Hyun thanks her staff for their efforts. It's time to call it quits on the project, but she does ask them to compile all the data they've gathered and give it to her. Sometime later, Seo Hyun ignores the ache in her lungs and focuses on the data. To her disbelief, someone has transferred her mother's brain one last time without her awareness. As she goes to investigate, she discovers that Jae Kyung was engaging in improper behavior with a clone of her mother. After wrapping the robot with a blanket, an enraged Seo Hyun knocks Jae Kyung against the shelves and accuses him of being a pervert. However, he tells her that he's innocent and he was given orders from headquarters to test a product development for the legendary mercenary. The headquarters believes that her image as a war hero may be incredibly profitable if used sexually. Seo Hyun can't believe what she's seeing, and she's shocked and outraged to see her mother's memories and consciousness put to such use. Later, Seo Hyun meets Kim, who's also sad at the Jung Yi project's termination. But before leaving, he informs her that the team has permitted one last simulation test. Seo Hyun then returns to the lab to spend time with the robot before the research is terminated. When Yun awakens, Seo Hyun lowers the pain sensors and informs her mother that they've saved her from the enemy and that she's severely injured, so she will help her in dying peacefully. When Seo Hyun is about to turn her off, the yellow part of the brain appears, and Yun shockingly asks if her daughter survived the procedure. When Seo Hyun says that the surgery was successful, Yun is relieved and admits that she'd been feeling guilty for losing the small doll her daughter had given her, which was meant to be a good luck charm. Seo Hyun then connects the dots and concludes that all the robots failed the simulation after seeing the doll nearby, which diverted her from the combat. She then shuts down the robot and breaks down, crying with her own remorse. The following day, Seo Hyun demands one more simulation before shutting things down. She tells the other team members she'll set things up on her own and asks them to leave. Once they're gone, she deletes the yellow part of Yun's brain that contains memories of her daughter. Soon the test begins, and everyone is worried because it's their final one. As expected, Yun is shot at the same time and falls to the ground, failing the simulation test once more. Jae Kyung notices some strange signals showing that the brain's response is weaker, but Kim doesn't care because the project is already over. The other staff carries the robot away, and Kim starts to make his way to his room when he realizes he's also seen something unusual. He then returns to the lab and requests that the simulation be replayed in slow motion. 
This leads him to discover Yun was not actually shot. She merely faked falling and landed in the usual position. Kim instantly shuts the door and declares an emergency lockdown. Meanwhile, Yun takes advantage of the commotion and starts knocking out the guards. When Kim finds out, he activates all the battle AI prototypes to locate and eliminate Yun. Seo Hyun, on the other hand, runs back into the lab and deletes all the original project data so that her mother cannot be replicated again. Later, Yun looks for a way out and stumbles across a room filled with dozens of robots that look like her. Just then, Kim's army of security robots finds her and they get into a vicious fight. Yun, on the other hand, is a legendary fighter for a cause and she effortlessly defeats them all. But when the fighting AIs continue to arrive in large numbers, Seo Hyun runs to the chamber to help her mother. At the right time, she transfers her brain into one of the newer battle AI models, fooling everyone. The mother-daughter duo then flees the activities on a sky train. However, they soon realize that they're not alone since Kim is waiting for them. After the train departs, Kim accuses Seo Hyun of being resentful for everything the chairman has done for her and tells Yun to keep her distance from her daughter. Hearing that she is her daughter confuses Yun, but Seo Hyun interrupts to explain that she's removed all the information about herself from her memories, so she may have a fresh start. Kim then shoots Seo Hyun in the shoulder, forcing Jung Yi to attack him and shoot him with his own gun in response. Meanwhile, all the other combat AIs in the police force start to follow the train. Moments later, Kim hurriedly rises to continue fighting, but stops when he notices his reflection in the window. He stares into his eyes and understands he's nothing more than a toy robot for the chairman. Nevertheless, he continues to fight and attacks Yun, while the AI police continue to fire on them. At this time, it appears that all hope is lost, but Yun is empowered when she sees her wounded daughter shaking on the floor. She then dismantles the remaining robots and throws Kim off the train. When the train reaches the mountain area, it finally comes to a halt. Yun wants to help Seo Hyun with her bullet wound, but they can hear the cops approaching, so Seo Hyun explains she doesn't have much time left anyways. Overwhelmed with emotion, Seo Hyun declares that Yun is now free and tells her to depart and live her life as she pleases. After some hesitation, Yun agrees to leave and she gives her daughter a final hug. The two then rub their cheeks together as they did when Seo Hyun was a child. As Yun exits the train, Seo Hyun wishes her success and dies alone, feeling she's found closure. Yun, on the other hand, is at a loss for what to think or do next. Even though her daughter's memories have been erased, she's aware that she's lost someone very special. And the movie ends.